Hey, man. Things are about to get pretty weird. Oh, baby. My God, what is it? Hey man, you ain't gonna believe the movie we got for you tonight. It's the coolest. A rubber suited drive in atrocity. Cannot wait. Hey, shut up, man. This movie's got it all. Yes, bad acting and a low budget. Morty, go back to your nether zone. We're trying to introduce tonight's movie. My nether zone, as you call it, is your cellar, peasant! And don't call me Marty! How can you not dig this flick, Morty? Man, it's got some monster movie to end all monster movies, man. It's like the creature from Black Lagoon, but with fangs. Why, oh why, couldn't I haunt the cellar of Masterpiece Theater? Look at it like this, Morty. You're haunting the cellar of Monsterpiece Theater. <laughs> Spooks! Don't listen to him, gang. This is one of Deke's personal faves, man. This ranks up there with the best movies Deke's ever seen. Deke, you love all the movies, we should. So? What's wrong with you, man? You got like Morty inside you or something? I'm sorry, man. Well, that would be weird. What? Well, it would be like one spirit possessing another spirit. Is that even possible? I certainly hope not. That's the last thing I need. I wouldn't possess that pasty-faced lout if he was the last ghoul on earth. I can smell the cheap gin from here. Shut up! Resemble that statement. Yeah, yeah, man. That's not cool. I am not pasty faced. I simply have no pigment. Yeah, man, you can't help it. Whatever, morons. I'm out of here. Can you believe that third rate poker guest insulted me like that? Yeah, yeah, man. Get tired of this. Isn't there some kind of like ghost exterminator or somebody we could call? Well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Exterminators. Uh, ghost exterminators. Ghost exterminators. Okay. Exterminators. Okay. Uh, blah blah. Man, Pico exterminator. Ghost be gone, 555-7065. Let's see. Call him, baby. It's ringing. Oh, hello, Mr. Manpico. Yes, we require your services. Uh-huh. Can, can you be at the cellar this afternoon? Oh, you can. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, sir. He will be here for this very afternoon. That's cool, man. Maybe we can get this taken care of and we can actually get through an episode without having to fight with Morty and get interrupted.
Deke's got to handle it this afternoon, baby. Deke's got to take his bike into town. What? The bombing fluid levels are getting really low. Okay. You know, after a night of showing groovy horror flicks and bailing Deke out for raiding the chicken coop, there ain't nothing like a good old cup of hot coffee. And let me tell you, the best coffee you ever put in your mouth comes from Drogo Coffee and Tea. That's right, folks, Drogo Coffee and Tea. They got several varieties to choose from. And as you might have guessed from the name, they have many wonderful varieties of tea that are excellent as well. You won't find them in the store. You have to go online to drogocoffee.com. They'll deliver that hot coffee right to your doorstep. That's drogocoffee.com. Infinity Flux, cards, comics, and games located on 3643 Hickson Pike in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You can call them at 591-5689. They're open seven days a week, Sunday and Monday, 2 p.m. to 10, Tuesday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, man, Deep digs this little monster movie, man. It won an award from Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. Deke remembers watching this little flick in an old theater by the ocean back in 1959 with Betty Boo. Hey, shut up, man. At least Deke gets the girls. Anyway, this little flick's about a mysterious creature that lives in a cave down by the sea, and the lighthouse keeper feeds it dead fish. But one night, the creature gets really kind of bored, and he wants to go party, so he goes into town, and he grooves with Gene Carmen. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Jean Carmen, she was like a B-movie actress and a model. And a real, real gone chick. She used to party with Elvis, Sinatra, and Marilyn, man. Are you serious, Dink? Yeah, yeah. She's real gone. And you know what else? What? She was also an ace golfer. What a woman. Yeah. Who else is in this sick flick, Dink? I mean, Dink? Well, I'll tell you, man. Les Tremaine... And Don Sullivan. Don Sullivan was a real cool cat. He was also in the Giant Gia Monster and Teenage Zombies, both of which will be shown on Tennessee Macabre real soon. Oh, man, this rocks. Say it again, baby. This rocks. So let's all dig one of the coolest monster movies ever made, man. The Rubber Suit Hit of 1959. Yeah, man. With Gene Carmen. Oh! Monster of Pedras Blancas. Hola amigos. Bienvenido a Tennessee Macabre. Nuestra película por esta noche es El Monstruo de Pedras Blancas. Conoces el Monstruo de Pedras Blancas? Es un película muy extranjero y muy, muy bueno. El monstruo de piedras blancas. <laughs> cuidado, cuidado, cuidado.
say you there! I told you to stay away from this light! I meant it! Now go on! Beat it! like it in my life. Head ripped clean off. What do you think, Constable? I don't know what to think. They're white as sheets. They don't look like they got a drop of blood left in them. Now, we'll know better after an autopsy. I bet old Sturgis knows more than he'll tell. The Rinaldi brothers always fished out at the point. Well, the boat could have drifted back. How about it, Madsen? I suppose you let me do the thinking. You take these bodies over to Kochex, and I'll have Doc Jorgensen take a look at them. Uh, I still think Sturgis ought to tell us what he knows. Maybe he don't know nothing. You want to bet? Oh. All right, now quit your grumbling. Get him out of here. Okay, folks, you go on home now, will you? This is not a Roman holiday, please. I need some supplies. You see what happened to the Rinaldi brothers? I didn't stop. It was me that found them. I went out on the pier to look at my lobster traps. When I see the boat way out over there by the breaker line, well, it was low on the water and uh, looked like it was empty. But I did not pay much attention until it drifted near the pier. Then I seen them, like slaughtered steers. <laughs> Their throats cut clean. Funny thing, though, not much blood around. Is that, uh... Lens cleaner I ordered come in yet? That'll be in next week. You know, the constable has the idea that they got caught in that squall we had last night and couldn't keep off the rocks. But if that was the case, I say they would still be on the rocks and nothing left of that boat at all. Let me have a pound of liver and two of bacon. You want to know what I think? It ain't rocks and it ain't squalls. It's something leaving that did it. Coach, check you talk too much. Oh, that's what they said two years ago. When that couple came down from the east to go fishing, they found nothing else but some debris washed up on the shore. Anything else? Uh, just my week's meat scraps. It's our team fishing. You know, if this had happened when I first came here, there would be nobody said nothing about rocks and squalls. It would be the monster of Piedras Blancas. I'm not so sure they would not be right. You know, we should pay more attention to these legends. It would explain many things that happened in the last 30 years. Kochek, you're a bigger fool than I thought. Now, where's my meat scraps? You did not show up yesterday, so I gave them to Bert for his hog. You knew I'd be in. I'm getting tired of keeping these meat scraps for you. Besides, Bert paid for it. You idiot. You'll be sorry for this. That'll be three dollars. Where are we put up? Wait a minute. Open up the ice room. Now, don't forget, we're burying the Rinaldi brothers in the morning. First class funeral. Better not miss it. What's parting him? Well, I didn't save the scraps for his stupid dog. I understand Doc Jorgensen's coming to look them over. I've got my own ideas of what happened. Come on.
Good morning, Dad. You left early this morning, Lucille. I had to open up. I got the supplies, so you won't have to shop. Thanks. Be home before dark. I'll have supper ready. Oh, I've got to work tonight, Dad. Mrs. Madsen isn't feeling too well. Oh. You got some nice liver. You always like that. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I don't like you coming home after dark. Oh, I'll be all right. Fred will bring me. Don't be late. Understand? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Sturgis, can I have a word with you? I uh, thought maybe you might be able to help me. Now, I know the Rinaldi boys always fished out to the point, and I thought you might have seen them. Uh, what time did the squall hit out there last night? About midnight. What time did you start the foghorn? I blew from 11.30 till dawn. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see anything unusual all night? If I had, I'd tell you. Well, just that I knew they always fished out there. I've told them plenty of times. It's dangerous this time of year. Never can tell when a blow is coming up. But they wouldn't listen. Nobody listens. They'll learn someday. What's aching him? He is the most unfriendly man I ever knew. I... Oh, I'm sorry, Lucy. I didn't mean that. This business has got me upset, I guess. That's all right, Mr. Madsen. I know the town isn't very fond of Dad. Uh, I'll go see what Doc's found out. I uh, don't imagine there'll be many people in for lunch today, so take the afternoon off if you'd like. Eddie here can take everything. All right, I'll see. All right. Your dad and the town always been at odds with one another? No, not always. What happened? Don't want to tell me? Some other time. Hey, lady, you gonna let a customer die of thirst? I don't know why I let this upset me. Oh, it's natural. Dad isn't really like that. Look, I'm sure he isn't. Hey, I've got a good idea. What's that? Well, I've got to go out to the point and pick some specimens. Why don't you come along? Gee, I'd like to, but I haven't had a chance to clean this place all day. You might not get another offer. All right. Maybe the townspeople won't be hungry today, but I'll bet you will. I'll make some sandwiches and we'll take them with us. There, you see, I knew there was some reason I wanted you to come along. I'm not sure it's me or my cooking you're falling for. Well, I always try to keep them guessing. Oh, you do, do you? Well, what happened, Doc? What'd you find? Well, the jugular veins, the carotid arteries, the esophagus, the trachea were cut straight across. There was a complete transection of the spinal cord. Right. In short, the heads were severed from the trunks. Death was instantaneous. Well, how could it have happened? I don't know, George. If we were living in the 19th century, I'd say they were victims of the guillotine. You mean they were murdered? <laughs> That's your department, not mine. I thought maybe it was an accident. Well, maybe it was, but I doubt it. The manner of death was identical in both cases, and it had all the earmarks of a conscious act. Looks to me like the work of some inhuman beast. Oh, that's a pack of nonsense, Kojak. You haven't been here as long as I have, Constable. Have you not heard of the legend of the monster of Piedras Blancas? An old wives' tale, you know it. Yes, of course it is. Now, it may have been a freak accident, or we may have a lunatic on our hands. Have there been any reports of strangers in the vicinity, George? No, I haven't heard of any. I can check with the constable over at Winswip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go over to the office. Mm -hmm. Look, Kocek, the whole town's upset. Now, keep your stories to yourself until we get this cleared up. Do you really think you will? Mr. Manpico? Well, come on in. You got cost? Yeah, Morty's got to go. He's disrupting everything. We can't do our show or anything. Where's where's all your equipment? You don't even you don't even look like an exterminator. I must first do a preliminary investigation. I must first establish the presence of the specter, then I bring in the equipment. Okay. You 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 have co host? Uh yeah, he's getting his motorcycle checked out. This 
this motion picture you show yeah. uh, in your show tonight, this monster of Pedro Blancas, yeah. you, you you have seen this beast? It's a movie. It, it's not real. The beast isn't real. It's oh. just a movie. Uh, of course, of course. You go host show. I go find ghost. That sounds good to me. Okay. Good luck with that. That was really weird. Let's continue with our movie. Let's try this. You fix the grub, ma'am. You sound like a drugstore cowboy. Flattery will get you nowhere. I've noticed. Oh, the townspeople don't know what they're missing. Neither does Mr. Matt. Well, it isn't going to bankrupt the wings. Oh, I left a dollar in the till. I feel like a kept man. Don't you worry. I'll get it back several times over. Remember, you're taking me to the windswept Saturday night. Oh, was that this Saturday night? You know darn well it was. Well, that's right. Next Saturday night's Marjorie. And the following Saturday, Imogene. Imogene? Kochek's prize hold scene. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, can I have a pickle? Help yourself. Fred, why did Mr. Madsen question Dad about the Rinaldi brothers? Just a shot in the dark, I guess. He couldn't think Dad had anything to do with it. Well, I'll ask George, but I think he was just looking for a clue. I guess so, but it worries me. I know the whole town's against Dad, and all he wants is just to be left alone. Well, sometimes in a small town, that's asking too much. Oh, I gotta get going, or I'll never get any specimens. <laughs> oh, I love it here. I wish I never had to go back to town. Back in the house ring. Go on. Get in there now. I don't know, Doc. There aren't any leads from Windswept. I, I haven't got one thing to go on except two mangled corpses and a busted up boat. I wish I could say I thought it was an accident, George, so you could close the books, but it just doesn't add up. You know, there was something I didn't mention to you in front of Kochek. Oh, what was that? Do you remember when I told you that the heads were severed from the trunks almost as if by a surgeon's scalpel? Yeah. And yet the main arteries were distended several inches. It appeared as if something had been attached to pump out the blood. I don't understand what you mean, Sam. Generally, when a person is killed, the heart stops pumping almost immediately. There's always some blood left in the body. You mean that there wasn't any blood left in him? No, essentially none. Sam, you don't think we've got a monster on our hands now, do you? No, 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 I don't. I, I think that there's a logical explanation that we just haven't found yet. But if I were you, I'd ride herd on Kochek. 
Rumors won't help now. Take my advice. You lock the doors and stay in the house tonight. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Wilson. Don't forget what I said. What can I do for you, Constable? You can do what I ask you to. I was only telling Mrs. Wilson what I thought. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the trouble with you. You're always telling people what you think. No crime in that. In the past, no, maybe not. This time you got the whole town upset. They got reason to be. Oh, about the Rinaldi brothers, yes, but not about some monster. Well, you know as well as I do. Those two are not murdered by any ordinary human. I didn't say anything about murder. Are you giving out that bunk about an accident? Until I'm sure, that's the official theory. And you better remember it. Any two-year-old can tell there was no accident. You should look up the history of this village. Look, Kochek, I'm not going to argue with you. Now, I'm ordering you to stop the rumors. And if you don't stop spreading them, I'm going to lock you up for attempting to incite riot. You can't do that. You try me. People don't mind their own business. Who, Kochek? Yeah. He's got the whole town in a state of nerve. He's a great talker. I told him if he didn't quit it, I was going to have him thrown in jail. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> no, I know that, but I don't think he does. Come inside for a minute, will you, Fred? I want to talk to you. Come on, have a cup of coffee. That Kochek's an idiot. He'd spend half as much time tending to business as he does gossiping, we'd be better off. I ordered that cleaner a month ago. Next week, he says. I'll bet we don't get it this time next month. See why they can't leave us alone. We do our job. There hasn't been a wreck on this point since we've been here. Those two brothers go fishing. Next thing, people asking questions, prying into our business. You ought to keep away from the point. That's what the light's here for. That girl wouldn't work nights. A lonely place to get to after dark. Come on, Ray. Come on, boy. I'd invite you in, but it would only upset Dad. He's gonna have to get to know me sometime. Let him get used to the idea of us going together first. Has he always been like that? When I was a child, he, he was lots of fun. What happened? I remember it was just before my ninth birthday. Mother hadn't been feeling too well that afternoon. There was a ship in trouble off the coast, and Daddy had to stay in the tower. Mother got worse, but wouldn't let me call him until early morning. He phoned for the doctor, but he refused to come out in the storm. When they returned, Mother was dead. I'm sorry. They were so much in love. When Daddy was first transferred here, he wouldn't have anything to do with anybody. Shortly after, I was sent away to boarding school. It's just been in the last two years that I've even been home during summer vacations. He must be a very lonely man. He is. He lives in a world all of his own. Sometimes I can't even get through to him. How is he going to take me? All right, I think. But it's going to be slow. Well, we've got the rest of the summer. It's a beautiful night. It's almost too nice. 
I haven't got a parlor I can invite you into, but I've got the best beach and rocks on the coast. Let's take a walk. Oh, I'd love to, but if I don't get those specimens prepared I collected this afternoon, our trip will have been for nothing. Well, you're very flattering. I'm sorry. Now, you know I didn't mean it that way. I forgive you. I'll be all right. See you tomorrow. Night. late, Lucille. I'm sorry. Did I hear you drive up a while back? Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful night. You've been swimming. How many times have I told you not to go swimming on that beach at night alone? Daddy, you wouldn't have wanted me to swim with anybody. I forgot my suit. I don't know what they teach you in college these days, but it certainly isn't modesty. Independence, Daddy. Independence. All the same, this is a wild and desolate coast. There's no place for a young lady, or anyone else for that matter, to be out alone at night. All right. I won't do it again. Tonight I had the strangest idea that I had a visitor. What do you mean? Nothing, really, I guess. I just had the feeling that somebody was watching me. You go swimming alone again at night, and I'm going to ship you back to that fine school of yours before vacation's over. Daddy, you're not serious. Yes, you bet I am. You're really angry. Let me get to bed. It's getting late. I'm sorry, Dad. Good night. Good night.
neighbors, this is the Grim Reaper. I want to talk to you about Tennessee Tuck. I recently took a little trip to their factory in New Hope. Did you know that they craft all their tubs right here in Marion County? Hey Deke, get out of that tub! I'm sorry folks, I can't take him nowhere. Come on down and visit Doug or Cody Fox for all your tub needs. They're located at 266 Long Island Road in New Hope. Or give them a call at area code 423-618-9451. Dollhouse Oddities is jewelry inspired by antiques and oddities. Whether you need a locket to ward off the evil eye or a charm bracelet for all the places you travel in your dreams, these one-of-a-kind creations are made with love and a little madness. Visit www.dollhouseoddities.com. New items created and added weekly. Tell Beth you heard about it on the Jukebox from Mars and receive a 10% discount off of your order. And shipping is always free. Dollhouse Oddities on Etsy. www.dollhouseoddities.com Are you suffering with arthritis, diabetes, digestive issues, inflammation, or chronic pain or migraines? How about anxiety or depression? Hemp can help. Come visit Hemp House in Chattanooga where they have a variety of hemp-based CBD products that include saps, tinctures, topicals, lotions, soaps, and beauty products. They also have vape products and edibles. And don't forget the family pet. Does your pet run and hide during thunderstorms or have chronic pain or arthritis? We have a full line of hemp products available to help your pet out. Our hemp is sourced locally and Hemp House proudly supports veteran-run farms. If you have questions about hemp or CBD, come by and speak with Dwayne or Catherine. Hemp House is located at 512 Tremont Street in North Chattanooga, right next to Benchmark Physical Therapy. The phone number is area code 423-531-4367. Mention this ad and you get a 10% discount. Hey gang, this is Deke Rivers from Tennessee Macabre, and today the Deke's in search of the monster of Pedras Blancas. Last time the monster of Pedras Blancas was seen, man, was in 1959 in California. Deke ran into it one time when he's riding his bike down the beach coast there, man. And the last time he was seen was in 1994 uh, in, in Des Moines, Iowa, but there wasn't any ocean there, so he didn't stay long. First thing Deke's got to do is find some evidence, man. Oh, man. Check it out, baby. The monster Pedras Blancas, man. He's been here. He's been having lunch, man. Some poor farmer, man. This is wild. Real wild. We're hot on the trail, man. I guess the only thing to do is, uh, is wait. Why don't you run, man? Yeah, I know. It's like a big crab, man, with antenna and claws and fangs.
It's like the creature from the Black Lagoon, man. Only meaner. Now all we gotta do is wait. The monster Pedris Blancas, he's gonna be out there. He's gonna be coming right at us, man. You cats ready? Are you ready, man? I dig sure hope so. Man, what time is it? Still no sign of the monster Pedris Blancas, but Deke ain't giving up, baby. have to come to the cemetery. Okay, Mom. brothers to rest with this promise that their untimely end shall not go unaccounted for as we put them to rest in the good earth of their native village I shall read these words for they were men who lived and died by the sea O most powerful and glorious Lord God at whose command the winds blow lift up the waves of the Someone's 
been murdered! Stop! Someone's been murdered! Who is it, Jimmy? Mr. Kochek. He's dead. He looks awful. Where, son? Where, where? I went to his store to buy some candy, and he was in his office dead. And, Mom, he didn't have any head. Now, can you hold him here for a few minutes while I get back to town? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, come on, Eddie. Let's go. Uh, we're not through here yet, folks. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven... Oh, this is no place for women and children. I'll send them home. Come on, please. Go on. As soon as the doctor's looked at the body, we'll give you a report. Go ahead now. And he took up the body with a counterclock. How did it happen? You better have a look. Eddie, you better get outside and get yourself some fresh air so you feel better. Okay. Yeah. And poor little Jimmy had to see a thing like this. Is that code check? Yeah. Same way? Complete transection of all the veins and arteries, plus the esophagus, the trachea, and the spinal cord. I couldn't have done a cleaner job myself. And no blood again, eh, Doc? Oh, pump dry. All right, that does it. Now, let's have a look around and see what we can find. He must have been killed last night or early this morning. Now, look, this, this blob of ink here is completely dry. Now, I'd say that much ink wouldn't dry in less than four hours, Doc. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say four hours would be minimum. Yeah. I drove by here about 10.30 last night. The door was open. So I stopped in to see if everything was all right. Kochek said he had to work late. It was hot in here, and he left the door open to get some air. I, it, it must have happened between 10.30 and 4 this morning. Mm. Well, it's difficult to tell with a body in that condition. I'd say about 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah, well, I'll settle with that. Uh, Fred, did you find anything? No, nothing yet. Fred, come here a minute. What do you make of this? I don't know. It looks like a fish gill, but it's too big. Well, maybe something you picked up on the beach. Well, could be. But I've never seen anything like it before. Well, let's take it over to my office. We can run some tests on it and look at it under the microscope, hmm? Might as well. Doesn't seem to be anything else around here. Let's go. You all right? Yeah. Take the body in the ice room, Eddie. Lock the place up. Stay here and keep an eye on things. I'll send a relief over later. Sure. Did you find anything? Yeah. Maybe it was Kuchek's monster. Now, nah, none of that. We got enough trouble the way it is. Two scientists have been dipping that thing in the solution for the last hour. Looking at it this way and that, now what is it? Our good constable doesn't seem to realize that scientific investigation is a slow and tedious process. Huh? Sometimes taking years. <laughs> oh, fine. We haven't even got days. Oh, relax, George. I'll be through here in a minute. Uh, Fred, hand me that comparative slide. Hmm? No. Take a look at this. What do you think? Well, there's no doubt about it. The two structures are similar. What's similar? Well, the structure of the specimen we found in Kochek's store is essentially the same as that of the diplovertebron, only larger. What is a diplovertebron? It's a prehistoric amphibious reptile thought to be extinct. Fossilized specimens have been found about 100 miles north of here. But this is living tissue. Living tissue? I thought you said they were extinct. This is not the scale of a diplovertebron. I simply said they were similar. Well, what is it then? I wish we knew that and how it got into Kochek's store. Oh, well, he's always roaming up the coast fishing. It's probably something he found and brought home with him. 
Well, maybe. But I still want to run a few more tests on this. Yeah, I think so. And in the meantime, I'm no closer to solving my problem. Well, that's about it until we can make positive identification one way or another. Even then, it may not help. Uh, I can't do any good here. I might as well get back to the cafe. Mr. Madsen! Mr. Madsen! Mr. Madsen! Oh, Mr. Madsen, I've been looking all over for you. What's the matter, Lucy? Dad. What happened? I don't know exactly. I found him at the bottom of one of the caves. He's hurt, I can tell. He's unconscious. Now, just take it easy. We'll go right out. Here, Lucy, here. Take one of these. You'll feel better in a minute. Yes. All right, can you make it? All right, let's get going. Come on. Here, Doctor. Thanks. You stay here. Doc? Yes, yeah, it's sorry. How is he, Doctor? Has a bad gash in his right arm and his leg is hurt. I can't tell how badly until I examine him more carefully. Help me get him to his feet, huh? Be careful, that arm is hurting real bad. That's it. Now, George, yeah. you get my bag, will you please? All right. Now, let's get him to the lighthouse so I can give him a more thorough exam. What was that, man? Decurred something. Whoa! There it is, man. There it is. The monster of Pedro's Blancas, baby! Dios mío, man! Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! Mm. Donde esta el monstruo, amigo? Rapagus Blancas! Rapagus Blancas! Rapagus Blancas! The scariest beast around. We're Pedro's Blancas. We're Pedro's Blancas. We're Pedro's Blancas. The scariest beast around. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. 
The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. performance as the boy possessed. Yvonne Lyon, appealing as the girl who loves him. Whit Bissell, unforgettable as the scientist maddened by the mystery of the werewolf. And Tony Marshall, a tough, friendly enemy. <laughs> These are official pictures? Yes, Chief. Slash on either side of the throat. You got any theories? Fangs. He was killed by, by a werewolf. Panic penetrates every home <laughs> when this strange unknown killer hits town, taking hold of the teenage crowd, <laughs> coloring their practical jokes with hysterical humor that'll make you fall flat on your face with horror. No. Remember how wonderful it was when you sprang and suddenly you dug in with your fangs, a soft throat, a gush of warm blood? No! No! Nothing you've ever seen has such blood-chilling savagery. Nothing you've ever conceived packs such a spine-tingling jolt. This high school boy, a teenage werewolf. A constant threat of claw-ripping attack to everyone, to the brave and the beautiful. genius who changed them into horrible creatures of another world. Then three strangers stumbled upon his green hell. Two men and a lovely girl who held civilization's last chance to halt this all-devouring evil. Could they stop all this terror? Could they stop this madman? who turned these lovely maidens into half-women, half-beast she-demons. For terror that has no equal, for excitement that never lets up, see this explosion of frightening fury that flames into a motion picture experience you will never forget. Would anybody like some coffee? Yes. Why don't you get some? I'll be a minute. She's taking it pretty well. She's a fine girl, Brad. Yeah, I know. Doc, how is he? Well, he's had a bad fall, but he's the wiry type. Doctor? Uh, no, no, later, Lucy, thank you. Will he be all right? No. He'll need rest. Take some time for this arm to heal, and we'll have to be careful no infection sets in. What about his leg? 
Well, fortunately, it isn't broken. There's uh, just a sprain, a bad cut. Well, I'll tape it up. Thank goodness. Honey, you have any idea how this might have happened? Nothing more than I told you. I went to bed about 11. I thought I heard him go out, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Was he alone? Probably Ring went with. That's strange. What? And all the excitement I hadn't noticed. Ring hasn't been around all morning. You know, I've never seen those two apart. They never are, except when Dad goes into town. Then he locks him up. I'll call him. Too. He usually comes when I call him. Oh, he'll show up. Lucy, here. Now, he'll probably sleep for quite a while. When he wakes up, give him one of these. If the pain is bad, one every two hours. Otherwise, one every four hours is often enough. Hmm? Would you take him to my room, please? Oh, sure. Uh, boys, would you help him? I sure. think he'll be more comfortable in bed. Hmm? Be bad. Easy now. All right. Can he have something to eat when he wakes up, Doctor? Well, yes, if he feels like it. But don't force him. Now, I'll be back later to have a look. And if there's any change, you can call. Hmm? Thank you. I wish he'd have felt like talking. Maybe he'd been able to tell us something. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out, George. There was a broken lantern on the beach beside him. Uh -huh. Now, he must have gone out last night when Lucy heard him. He went down by the rocks and fell. Yeah, but that still doesn't explain where the dog is. He's probably out from the moors chasing rabbits. Well, maybe so. Uh, we better get back to town. Yeah. Right. Look, uh, take my Jeep. I'm going to stay with Lucy for a while. You can come back and pick me up later. All right. All right, Fred. Perhaps you'll be able to talk then. Thanks for everything. Anytime, Lucy. You look bushed. Sit down, I'll get you a coffee. I don't know how Dad's going to take this. He's never been sick a day in his life. Well, he's just going to have to get used to it and take it easy for a while. You don't know Dad and his lighthouse. I'll come out and give you a hand. Maybe it'll give me a chance to get to know him a little better. Uh, Lucy? He's awake. How do you feel, Dad? I don't know. What happened? We found you on the beach at the bottom of one of the big cliffs. The doctor says you'll have to stay in bed. Oh, but I can't. You've got to. I've got to tend the light. Dad. I'm sorry, sir. Those are orders. What are you doing here? He helped get you up from the beach. Oh. Would you like something to eat? Maybe some broth. Well, I suppose you won't leave me alone until you get your own way. It'll be good for you. Watch him, will you, Fred? I'll be right back. Thank you. That's all right. Do you have any idea what happened? I'm trying to think. Well, you must have gone out last night. Lucy said she heard you, and there was the broken lantern on the beach. Yes, that's right. After she went to her room, I took the lantern and started down toward the cove. Why? She'd been swimming again, and I'd forbidden it. Uh, she's headstrong. And last night, she had the feeling she was being watched. I went down to see what I could find. Yeah. Did you see anyone? No. There's been another murder. Ooh. Kocek, we found his body this afternoon. He talked too much. Mr. Sturgis, you've been around a long time. What do you know of the legend? Piedras Blancas? Well, the coastal currents off this point are very treacherous. 
And the rocks on the seaward side are covered in white with gull droppings. In bad weather, they're almost impossible to see. Many a ship was lost on those rocks before this light was built. There's not a record of any survivors. Oh, with the coast and surf like that, that isn't surprising. No, but people would rather start a legend. Some of the earlier settlers claimed a monster lived in the rocks below this point. Do you believe it? Of course not. Has anyone ever had a look in those caves? It's government land. Nobody's allowed. Do you mind if I have a look? There's nothing there. Well, then it won't hurt to have a look. I don't want you on those rocks. It's dangerous. All right. Are you sure that you don't remember anything that happened last night? I did, I tell you. You got to try to help us. You got to tell me whatever you can. Well, where was she going? Let us enter to the store. Thanks, Will. Come on. Let's go check with Eddie. See if she ever got there. <laughs> His broth will be ready in a minute. What's the matter? Well, nothing. I can tell. And what is it? Is your father often gone from the lighthouse any length of time? Why do you ask? You said after your mother died that he changed. Yes. And that after you moved out here, you wanted to be left alone. He even sent you away to school. Wouldn't let you come home during vacations. What are you getting at? How long was it after you moved here that he sent you away to school? About two months. Did anything unusual happen before he sent you away? I don't think so. But you said he seemed better for a while. He was. Then why did he send you away? Oh, it's something I did. It wasn't anything, just kid stuff. No, go on. Well, when we lived up north, he, he let me play around the rocks and go to the beach alone. But shortly after we moved here, he refused me the privilege. Said it was too dangerous. The cliffs never seemed any bigger than the ones up north. So I sneaked away one day and got caught in one of the caves by the tide. When he found me, it was dark, and he was furious. I'd never seen him like that. He sent me to bed without supper, and the next morning I was packed off to boarding school. I didn't see him for almost ten years. And he didn't give you any reason at all? I never questioned him. You've heard of the legend of White Rocks? Sure. But you've never been in those caves. I think I'll have a look. What for? Your father's keeping something from me. Isn't that a little unfair? I don't think so. He as much as ordered me not to go in those caves. Well, this is his light. He's responsible. Look, that's not quite the point. Three people in the last 24 hours have met with violent deaths. I don't think there's anything to the legend, but I've got to be sure. Even if it means disobeying my father? I'm not his son-in-law yet. I thought you trusted him. I do. If you did, you wouldn't go to the caves. I'm sorry. I don't think you'd better come here again. Eddie! 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 That's 
funny. I told him to stay here till I said a relief. Let's look outside. I can't understand where Eddie's disappeared to. You look in the office and see if Kochek's body's still there. All right. I'll try the ice room. Yes. coming at him, he really lost his head. <laughs> <laughs> the monster just wanted to get ahead in life. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! No! We found our killer. Mm. Or he's found us. Well, can you handle things here? I better go get Fred. All right, George. Now be careful. Yeah. Fred. What's happened? There have been two more murders. Oh, no. Who? Eddie and Will's little girl. How did it happen? Well, I haven't got time to tell you now. I've got to get Fred and go back into town. He went down to the cliff. All right. Oh, look. Now, remember one thing. You keep the place locked. And don't come out until we call you. Now, there's a creature loose around here someplace. Uh, he's not headed this way, but don't take any chances. All right. Now, remember. Quite a fright. I'm sorry, Fred. What's the matter? We found our killer. What is it? It's inhuman. He's nearly seven feet tall. He's got tremendous strength. You know that scale? That scale you found? That was part of it. He's killed two more people and escaped. Where'd he go? South, along the beach. We've got to track him down. I'll tell Lucy. No, 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 no. I've already warned her. They're no danger. We'll go after him. So come on. some broth that's ready. Wait a minute, man. Wait. 
Now look, Fred and I will cover the beach along the rocks. Merritt, you take two men to cover the cliffs from the top. Jake, you try the moor. Now don't get divided. And don't try to take him by yourself because you're no match for him. Now fire three signal shots in case you come in contact with him. But don't get too close. Wait till the rest of us get there. You understand that? Yeah. All right, let's go. Look at the size of those prints. Want me to signal? No, no, no. Let's wait till we're sure that he's cornered. You know, some of these caves come out on top of the cliff. Gone out through the town. Come on. Over here! Barrett's dead. We'll have to get Mike back right away and patch him up. We'll all have to go back. We'll need reinforcements. Well, come on, let's go then. He needs medical attention. Yeah, now look, man. We'll start the hunt tomorrow morning at daybreak. Bring Merritt's body, boys, will you? Let me help you. rock formations are very peculiar. I think perhaps they may be from the Paleolithic. I was, I was merely, I was merely trying to establish the whereabouts of the poltergeist so that I may begin my investigation in Toto. Have you found our poltergeist? Not yet, but there's a very strong possibility he will materialize momentarily. Tulu. Gee, Carmen, you're a real gone chick, baby. Why don't you dump the monster pages Blancas and get with the deke? Gee, Carmen, Deke loves you, baby. Almost as much as he loves chicken. Gene Carmen, you're just like a real crazy rock and roll radio station tuned into some place real cool and blue. Or something like that. Gene Carmen, you're the soft silver full moon slice in the Deke's heart, baby. <laughs> You're a real hot cup of coffee, baby. You're like a long, hot, sweet summer night. Dollhouse Oddities is jewelry inspired by antiques and oddities. Whether you need a locket to ward off the evil eye or a charm bracelet for all the places you travel in your dreams, these one-of-a-kind creations are made with love and a little madness. Visit www.dollhouseoddities.com 
New items created and added weekly. Tell Beth you heard about it on the Jukebox from Mars and receive a 10% discount off of your order. And shipping is always free. Dollhouse Oddities on Etsy. www.dollhouseoddities.com You know, after a night of showing groovy horror flicks and bailing Deke out for raiding the chicken coop, there ain't nothing like a good old cup of hot coffee. And let me tell you, the best coffee you ever put in your mouth comes from Drogo Coffee and Tea. That's right, folks, Drogo Coffee and Tea. They got several varieties to choose from. And as you might have guessed from the name, they have many wonderful varieties of tea that are excellent as well. You won't find them in the store. You have to go online to drogocoffee.com. They'll deliver that hot coffee right to your doorstep. That's drogocoffee.com. Are you suffering with arthritis, diabetes, digestive issues, inflammation, or chronic pain or migraines? How about anxiety or depression? Hemp can help. Come visit Hemp House in Chattanooga where they have a variety of hemp-based CBD products that include saps, tinctures, topicals, lotions, soaps, and beauty products. They also have vape products and edibles. And don't forget the family pet. Does your pet run and hide during thunderstorms or have chronic pain or arthritis? We have a full line of hemp products available to help your pet out. Our hemp is sourced locally and Hemp House proudly supports veteran-run farms. If you have questions about hemp or CBD, come by and speak with Dwayne or Catherine. Hemp House is located at 512 Tremont Street in North Chattanooga, right next to Benchmark Physical Therapy. The phone number is area code 423-531-4367. Mention this ad and you get a 10% discount. Infinity Flux, cards, comics, and games, located on 3643 Hickson Pike in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You can call them at 591-5689. They're open seven days a week, Sunday and Monday, 2 p.m. to 10, Tuesday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friends and neighbors, this is the Grim Reaper. I want to talk to you about Tennessee Cup. I recently took a little trip to their factory in New Hope. Did you know that they craft all their tubs right here in Marion County? Hey Deke, get out of that tub! I'm sorry folks. I can't take him nowhere. Come on down and visit Doug or Cody Fox for all your tub needs. They're located at 266 Long Island Road in New Hope. Or give them a call at area code 423-618-9451. Feeling better. You slept most of the day. This is good and warm. It'll give you strength. No, I've got to get up to the light. Eat this and we'll talk about it. But you don't understand. Yes, I do. There. That's better. Dad? Yes. Why didn't you want Fred to go to the caves? It's dangerous. Is that the only reason? What's between you and Fred? 
I'm in love with him. I don't want you to see him again. Two more people have been killed in the village. Do you know anything about the killings? The people in the village think you do. They're fools. Daddy, the last person killed was a child, a little girl. Maybe I'm responsible. I don't know. What do you mean? Do you remember the long walks I used to take when we first came here? You'd say they help to keep you from brooding about Mother. Yes. Well, there were many caves along the cliffs that I, I was sure had never been explored. I noticed one in particular, a low tide. One day when a tide was at full ebb, I waded out through the opening and walked through it. I walked for what seemed miles and until I saw a light ahead. Climbed up to it and, and found a narrow fissure opening at the mouth of the big cave below the lighthouse. It wasn't big enough for me to get through, so I had to go back. Just before I got to the, the entrance, I realized the tide had closed me in. Suddenly, I I had the strangest feeling that I was being watched. And I heard sounds like heavy breathing. I dove through the opening and swam out. The next day, I went back to the mouth of the cave below the light and left some fish I'd caught. The following morning, they were gone. Is that why you packed me off to boarding school? Oh, I knew it wouldn't be long until you'd You'd find that opening and squeeze through. I couldn't take a chance, Lucy. After you left, I was even more lonely. Strange, but I got to worrying about that poor creature in the cave. I fished every day and left my catch. Finally, I, I just couldn't catch enough, so I, I got meat scraps. It wasn't long before the fish was refused and I had to get more. I had to get more meat. And last night, when you mentioned that you had the feeling someone was watching you, you had to go down and see. I must have slipped on the rocks, or I don't know. I'm sorry, Dad. Can you remember anything else that happened last night? I just had the feeling somebody was watching me, that's all. Dad, do you mean to tell me you've been feeding this, this whatever it is, all these years? Until Kochek gave my scraps away the other day. I'd have paid him for them if that's what he wanted. I'm sure he didn't do it spitefully. So you see, if, if there is a monster, maybe in a way I am responsible. Don't say that, Dad. You had no way of knowing. But I should have guessed. I should have guessed and told the sheriff that. But somehow I had a, I had a protective feeling. Like it was my own. After you left, I was very lonesome, Lucy, and seemed less lonesome knowing that there was some living creature nearby. I know it's stupid, but I never got along with the townspeople. It was something to hang on to. I understand. Dr. Jorgensen says you'll have to stay in bed. I've got to tend the light. I'll turn it on when it's time. But the prisms need cleaning, and it's got to be oiled. One night won't hurt. Lucy, you've got to help me. It's a, going to be a clear night. You don't have to worry. But suppose the legend is true. You could kill yourself going up there tonight. I could do less. I, I can't. It's my responsibility. Oh, all right. Lucy, Let me get you, you something more. You've got to help me. If, if, if a ship went aground tonight and he was out there hunting, there wouldn't be a single survivor.
rest a while. All right now? Yeah, let's go on. I'll be all right now. You can go down. Are you sure? If I need you, I'll call you. Better bolt the door, windows. Don't go. All right. What's that for? Is that nothing? Crazy here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, Doc, I, can I give you a hand? No, no, no I'm almost finished now, George. Oh, how bad is he? Well, he'll be all right. Had a bad blow on the head. He's suffering from shock, mashed hand. But I can't find much other damage. Yeah. Look, I don't know what good all this snooping around does. Now that we got a monster on our hands, let's go out and get it. You saw what happened this afternoon. We're no match for him yet. Oh, all right, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just jumpy. Well, what did you find? Well, he's definitely a member of the Diplovertebron family. But a peculiar derivation. Where'd he come from? Well, from the description you and the doctor gave me, and a careful analysis of these two scales, I'd say he was created at the bottom of the sea. No, I don't understand it. Well, it's obvious from the structure of this scale that he's capable of sustaining tremendous pressures, the likes of which you'd only find at great depths. Still, he seems equally capable of living out of water. This leads me to believe perhaps he's from a subterranean cave. Oh, well, then you think he's some kind of a fish? No. But he bears a marked resemblance to the reptilian family. Like a crocodile, huh? That's right. Of course, we have no idea where he came from or how he got here. And I'm just guessing. But I'd say he's a mutation of the reptilian family. Well, this is what we've got to decide before we go after him in the morning. Does he have a brain that's capable of rational thinking, or is he just a beast? If he can think, we're in real trouble. Okay, Mike. Now, well, you take it easy for a while. Thanks, Doc. What do you think, Doc? I think we'd better try to establish a pattern from his actions. You'll buy the reptilian theory, then? Well, it accounts for the bloodlust, all right. It you know, also explains his appearance. Did you notice anything about his vision or hearing? Uh, not much. It all happened too fast. Offhand, I'd say he operates primarily on the sense of smell. Why do you say that? Well, we didn't discover him until George surprised him by going into the ice room. Now, either he's very clever, knew we were there and was hiding, or else he didn't sense the danger until we were right on top of him. Well, he might have been asleep. Uh, if his sense of hearing was any good, he would have awakened long before that. I don't think he just happened to go into Kochek's store. I think he smelled the meat, went in, found Kochek, finished him off, and then went into the ice room in search of more food. Yeah, and then poor Eddie walked right into the death trap. <laughs> That's right. Well, you think he either sensed or knew that if he remained there, he'd be fed? Then we have a thinking monster. I'm afraid so. I'd like to take him alive. Why, we wouldn't stand a chance. Besides, I couldn't allow that. I'm responsible for the welfare of the people of this town. Now, we've got a monster on our hands, and it's my job to see us destroyed. George, it may be the safest way to get him. Oh, you're, you're siding with him? Now, look, it won't be easy to kill this thing even if we want to. You saw what happened to the meat cleaver when it hit him. Now, maybe we can kill him with a gun. I don't know. But I do know that our greatest advantage is our brains. All right, then let's use them and not take a chance. Listen to me a minute. We'll get a net, and we'll put it at the base of the cliff. 
with a side of beef in the middle of it. When he comes to get the meat, we drop the net and close in on him. Believe me, George, it's the safest way. If you try to corner him, there's no telling how many men he will kill before you get him. Besides that, Fred is right. He may answer a lot of our questions on evolution, as well as putting our town on the map. Well, I suppose you two will get your own way. If I didn't believe it was right, I wouldn't even suggest it. All right, all right, then let's get into town. Now, I want to see that the streets are all cleared by dark. Then we'll go to the garage and get on this net business. We'll see you later, Doc. Call me if you need me. I'll be here. I've got an idea of the safest way to catch the monster to trap him. Now, if we can get a net about 10 by 10, I think we can do it. You got one? I think so. We'll take a look. All right, I'll be back shortly. I have to go over to the office. Take the jeep. Oh, thanks. together. What are you going to do with this thing if you do catch it? Ship it to the university. But what are they going to do with it? Well, finding a living link in the evolution of any species could clear up a lot of unanswered questions. I guess so, but it ain't getting this net built. Fred. Fred, I, I'm worried. What's the matter? Well, as I drove over from the office, I noticed the light wasn't on. Now, you better phone Lucy and see if everything is all right. Go ahead. There's no answer. Did you use the right number? 761. Try it again. Something's wrong. I better get out there. All right. You go ahead. Now, I'll round up some men, and I'll follow as quickly as I can. I'll go with you.
to bed. your fire. You might get Sturgis. say that monster really fell for Gene Carter. Goat man. I'm sorry. BK said of this movie, man. I mean, the monster Pedro's Blancas was just a misunderstood sea beast yearning for affection. I can see why you like this movie so much. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, man. Best monster movie ever. Pure Beetopia. And the creature's really groovy too, man. Did you get a load of those claws? Hey, something's wrong. Hire an exterminator to Whoa. get rid of me, will you? Well, try this on for size, cretins. I have taken possession of Grimm's body. At long last, this putrid show is history. Hey, man, get out of here, Morty. <laughs> for spook's sake. 
Never! I'm going to end this celluloid atrocity right here, right now! There's one thing you didn't count on, Morty. What's that, wolf boy? That's the power of rock and roll. Yeah! truth is, I'm a zoologist. All my life, I have searched for the monster of Pedrus Blancus. When I heard you were showing the film on your show, I felt sure that I might find a clue as to the beast's whereabouts. But alas, all I found was hard eggs. I did not bridge the gap between man and fish. I bridged the gap between man and hard eggs. I am a failure. Oh yes, I accept that now. I, blah blah man Pico, am a failure. I go now. I feel sorry for that man, but the monster of Piedro Blancas is a movie. It's not a real zoological creature. All right, Piedro Blancas, you want some fish, man? You hungry? You want some fresh fish? That's right, buddy. That's right. <laughs> That's what they think. Hey man, things are about to get pretty weird. Oh baby. My God, 